Hey guys, this is Jim Merritt with Quick Trainer in beautiful Wilmington, North Carolina. We are your QuickBooks and accounting experts. Um, today's video, I'm going to discuss the chart of accounts and more specifically, how you can go about importing the chart of accounts into a, a new file. And, um, and I'll talk a little bit about um, what you can do to um, standardize your chart of accounts if you're working in an existing file. So the file that I have on screen right here, um, it's a brand new file. And if I look at chart of accounts, you can see I have a few accounts in here already. And we've got four digit numbers here. Uh, that's because I've already cleaned these up to make them four digit numbers. And then we've got a couple of um, uh, five digit numbers here. And, um, you know, what you're going to find is that uh, using the import method that I'm discussing today is that these accounts already exist in the import that you'll be doing. So I normally just, you know, get rid of them. Okay. Edit, delete account. Okay. And uh, edit, delete account. Okay. Now I will tell you there's a few accounts, payroll liabilities. I can't get rid of that, okay? But I can give it the right number, and if I don't have payroll, I can always make it inactive. Opening balance equity, yeah, you can delete that one, but you know what? It's gonna come right back if you do. Um, retained earnings, same thing. You can delete it, but it's gonna come right back. So I've already given it the number that I like to use, that we like to use with all of our clients. The payroll tax expenses account, um, cannot get rid of it. Um, so again, I give it the proper number, and if I don't have payroll, um, then I just make it inactive. To make account inactive, you right-click and say make account inactive. This account number here, um, ask my accountant. Yes, I can get rid of it, but I don't want to. I use this account, and I encourage my, I encourage my clients to use this account. Actually, I don't use it very much, but I encourage my clients to use this account if um, they have a transaction that they're posting and they're just not sure which general ledger account to post it to. This is a great place to put it. And when somebody like myself or a CPA, you know, anybody who understands accounting, if they're looking at your books and they see Ask My Accountant, they're probably going to want to drill down and let's take a look at the transactions that are in there. Hopefully you've put good memos on your transactions, right? You have put good memos on your transactions. And so with little effort, they'll be able to tell you which is the proper account to post things to. All right, but I digress. So over here, I have um, a file that I opened up in Excel. All right, and let me just go through how you go about opening this. So first of all, let me just um, let me save this real quick. Okay, and I'm going to close it. So, oops. So when you try to open up this file um, in Excel, so if I uh, click here, I'm going to click here because this is where I've stored the file, and I click here. Um, you can see I have one called COA, COA Download, Chart of Accounts Download. Okay, um, interesting. Why it's doing that, I don't know. Um, however, I can go right back over here and say, tell it to, to import it there. Because I'd already opened this file before, so it had it on its um, you know previously opened files list. When you get this screen here, though, to open this file, you can just click Finish. Okay, now here's the results. And I always click and highlight everything and then double click to expand all the cells. If you don't know about doing that, then that's outside the scope of this video. But here are the accounts I want to um, import. Now what I have to be careful about is when I go to import these, these accounts or this file, that I don't have any um, accounts already in QuickBooks that have the same account number or the same name. So for instance, Ask My Accountant. If I come down to the very bottom here, I see I have Ask My Accountant. So I highlight that and I'm just going to delete that, okay? Because it will it will error if you try to, to import it. Um, payroll tax expense. Well, I know that that a, that is an account that um, is a part, it's the parent account for all these other payroll tax expense related I, um, general ledger accounts. But in the file that I'm going to point you to, I have gone ahead and deleted that. Um, and 
but if that's not the case, if you find, you know, in a file that you've downloaded um, to import that there's a, an existing account already there, just highlight it and get rid of it. Otherwise, it will error. Okay. Now, when it errors, when you do the import and it errors, all it does is it imports everything until it finds an error, and then it stops. Okay. So everything up a up until the error line gets imported, but then it stops, and anything on the error line and below the error line um, would still need to be imported. Okay. Um, so let's see. Retained earnings. Um, again, you won't find retained earnings in this file, um, but you could find retained earnings. Um, actually, what I've done is I've already cleaned up this file some, but I'm going to point you to a location in a minute where you can download an IIF file. That stands for Intuit Information File, and that's the format we use to import uh, list type data. List type data being customers, vendors, employees, chart of accounts, uh, etc. Okay, but the bottom line is, is if you have an account over here, look over here to make sure you don't have it here. If you have an account over here that has a different number, change the number here. Okay, and to change the number, you just highlight, right click, and say edit account change the number and you also want to make that then make sure that the name here reads the same as it does over here um, or otherwise your import won't go exactly as you planned it so let's see I haven't tested this so who knows what's going to happen um, I'm gonna go ahead and just save this file I'm gonna say yes to that and notice when I try you saw me save it Notice when I try to close it QuickBook says do you want to save the changes and you would think you'd want to say yes but no, you've already made the changes. If you click yes, it's going to prompt you where do you want to save it to. That's not what you want to do. You've already saved it. So click no. And why does it do that? It's because it's it's a, um, a text delimited or, or a tab delimited file. And it, Excel treats it a little strange. Now, first of all, where did I get that file to even you know begin to open it up in Excel? Well, I'll take you to our website. So if you'll go to www.quicktrainer.net, and if you just click on our blog, um, and here, let me just do it. Click on blog, and then scroll down a little bit on our website. And right here, if you'll just search for IIF, okay, that's how I got to the place that you saw, and it was this first link here in this case. And then if you notice here, here you can get a nice little PDF file that shows all the accounts that we like to use. Okay, so that might be worth your your viewing, and you can download that. I won't do that. Right here, though, you, you and you can see it says right click. If you right click, this is a chart of accounts.iif file, a coa.iif file. So you would right click, do a um, interesting. <laughs> do a save link as and then just navigate to wherever you want to save that link okay now so with that all said and done um, let's do this I'm going to go to file and by the way you must be in single user mode which I am okay but you have to be in single user mode and not a hundred percent positive but I think you have to be yeah I'm almost positive you have to be logged in as the administrator to the file in order to do this now if there's no other users that log into your file you're already logged in as the admin all right so then we're going to go to utilities import IIF files <laughs> okay I've got two files here open so oops let me just close one real quick All right, and as soon as I close this file, which is the primary file, this will then flip back over to the primary file itself. But right now, it's known as the secondary file. Make sense? All right, so now you see that the secondary went away. That means this is the primary file. File, Utilities, Import, IIF Files, and then I'm going to navigate to the location I want to be at, which is not there. Um, Q, Q, and Mr. Chart of Accounts. There it is. So I'm going to click there, and it's going to start the import process. Let's see if we get any errors. Hey, look, no errors. All right. Um, go ahead and enlarge this.
So now when we click on our chart of accounts, you can see there is the handy work I just accomplished, okay? Um, and all of these accounts are now in there. Let's see if there's any problems with any of these. No, everything looks good. Um, one thing I would strongly recommend you do um, along these lines is have account numbers turned on. So if you go to Edit, Preferences, Accounting, Company Preferences, you click on Use Account Numbers, which this one's already on. And I'll show you one more thing before I fit, wrap this up. Um, so notice that we have travel entertainment and under that we have, you know, we'll say um, mileage. If I'm posting to one of those accounts, let's say I'm posting to mileage. Okay, you see how it looks like because of the size of this, the, the width of this window, it looks like I posted to the 7,000 account. And by the way, you don't want to do that. When you have parent, when you have child or sub accounts, okay, They're, that term is synonymous. In other words, this is the parent. And these are child accounts or sub accounts, but it looks like I posted to the parent account. But if I expand this window, I will say, no, I did post to mileage. Well, there's an easy fix to make that more clear. And again, we're going to go back to edit, preferences, accounting, and that is show lowest sub account only. But I will tell you right now, the only way you can do show lowest sub account only is if every general ledger account and I do mean every one has a number assigned to it. It will not let you do it otherwise. So, you know, let's say you have some inactive accounts. Well, you need to click include inactive and make sure that those inactive accounts have general ledger account numbers as well. All right, guys, it's been a little lengthy video. Um, I'll go on, on 12 minutes. Thank you so much. I hope you find this helpful. You can always call us at 910-338-0488. You can email us info at quick trainer.biz, B-I-Z. All right, make it a great day.